Okay, thank you, Toby. For those of you who were here this morning, I apologise that there'll be a, a couple of, bit of slides which are repetition from what Toby presented, but it's just to kind of give you some context to the project and where it's coming from. So my name is Anthony Corns. I'm the Technology Manager at the Discovery Programme. We're a, a research institute based in Ireland. I'm funded by the Heritage Council and, and the, uh, our government. And uh, what the presentation I'm looking at today is, uh, is the Cherish Project. So this is uh, funded through the Island Wales 2014-2020 uh, fund. And uh, the specific objective within Objective 2 is to increase the capacity and knowledge of climate change adaptation for the Irish Sea and coastal communities. So this is a project between two nations, so Ireland and Wales, and it includes four partners. So ourselves, the Discovery Programme, uh, the Royal Commission of Ancient Historic Monuments of Wales, Aberystwyth University and the Geological Survey of Ireland. So we all bring a different kind of skill and, and uh, methods to the project in terms of paleoenvironmental, geomatics, archaeology, marine survey, things like this. So there's basically three kind of thrusts to the, the project. One is establishing new coastline, coastal baseline data and recording standards, uh, linking land and sea, so getting rid of this white ribbon that exists around the coast where it's hard to get the data, and understanding historic climate and weather. So in terms of climate change, again, I'll go over this briefly, it's kind of teaching grandmas to suck eggs. There's a, there's a couple of things which are kind of pressing in terms of climate change for, for all of us specifically here for Ireland, these are the figures. So precipitation, was in, by 2041, 2060, there'll be a, a reduction in the summer, but over uh, winter there'll be about 14, 15% increase. Uh, surface air temperatures will increase. Uh, hydrology, uh, flood risk increase. Uh, sea level rise increase within Ireland. Uh, uh, low emission models are about 0.5 metres by 2100. Uh, the high estimates are about 4.6 metres. Uh, wind speed increases uh, in the winter and decreases during the summer and wave surge increase nine centimetres it's estimated. So this, the, we're kind of looking at a couple of these things, so wind uh, and wave surges, wind speed and sea level rise are the kind of the main kind of thrust of the climate change effects we're looking at within the coastal heritage. Um, the idea within the project is to test these different toolkits or methodologies both in the marine environment, the coastal environments and in, and in the kind of environmental environments and the aerial environments and bring all these together and test them and see what's the kind of most effective way to kind of look and, and evaluate our coastal, coastal change and the marine environment change. So in terms of survey areas we were kind of different than in Wales. Wales had already had the benefit of a rapid coastal zone assessment so they could kind of focus in on certain areas to work Within Ireland, we had to. There's been no coastal zone assessment ever done in Ireland, so this is where we were starting from scratch. So we kind of made these boxes quite large, and as the project's gone on, we've kind of focused in within specific areas in there. So we have five areas in total, but within that, we have 17 specific, let's say, uh, sites which we'll we're focusing more upon. So I'm just going to kind of look at some of those sites and some of the work we've done this year, and uh, this is just kind of a the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we've we've achieved. So in terms of 15 minutes what we can get through. So this is one of the sites, uh, this is Glass Carrick, uh, it's a Martin Bailey 12th century uh, site in East Wexford, sorry, the 16th century site in, in East Wexford, uh, which is here. And you can see here it's, it's kind of rapidly eroding into the sea. This is the edge of the, the Martin Bailey site here. And this is, so we're here we are kind of employed the use of drone technology to kind of do an aerial or systematic aerial survey here. So we used two separate drone systems. One was this, which is the DJI Phantom or the lower cost one. And then we've got a bigger kind of one here, which is can lift a heavier payload and can lift like an SLR camera and we can change the lenses on it. But we found actually by using this drone here, which is the more expensive one, it's harder to get actually into sites we want to survey because the case is so big, it has to fit in the back of a car and we, it takes two people to physically carry it to the site. So we found that, you know, we, we, we've we been using this this drone to capture really good author imagery and videography, but in terms of kind of the, doing the kind of workhorse uh, survey, we've been using the Phantom for. Um, um, whenever we do aerial survey, the ground targets placed uh, within the survey area, and these are all positions using an RTK GPS system. So we're making sure all the surveys are kind of got a, a reference to about one and a half centimetres uh, in, in, in real terms. So you can just see the example of uh, the images we've taken along kind of 
the survey lines. And these are just some of the examples of the terrain models we've produced from. So we've stripped away all of, whenever we work in 3D, we tend to strip away the photography, to be honest, because you can start to see the, the geomorphology and the, the, the morphology and the real data, because a lot of the time, when you put images on top of 3D models, the images tend to mask how good the quality of the data is. So, so here's, we did a, the wider survey. You can see some detail, but you can see the, the, the kind of detail of where the erosion of the side and the bottom Bailey site here. So we've, ca we've carried out this aerial survey now over, I think, 17 sites in total uh, across the, uh, the Irish uh, survey areas. So here's just a couple of examples. So there's Braymore in North Dublin. Uh, this is a site of Neolithic sites. It was, this was going to be proposed as the new port of Dublin before the crash happened. Uh, and here is a, a Rossler fort, or what's left of it. So this was a, a fort that stood in the sea. Uh, and it doesn't exist anymore. It kind of uh, fell into disrepair when there was no investment and the sea kind of basically took it. So when low tide appears, we'd go out there with the drones and the terrestrial laser scanner and, uh, and capture the data. And uh, this is a site in Kerry, uh, which you can see here. This is this site's owned by the OPW. So you can see there's actual inter intervention here where actual uh, concrete seawall is, is protecting what's already been eroded away here uh, from the site. But this site was uh, flown with aerial survey and with terrestrial laser scanning. So this was a good site where we kind of showed the joint cooperation between ourselves and the Royal Commission where uh, Dan from the, uh, the Royal Commission in Wales actually came over and surveyed this with, with, our, with our staff and our staff provided the, the on-site terrestrial laser scanning. So the idea is to merge all these data sets together to get this kind of best record of the sites. Uh, Another site where we were working at was Doonberg Fort in, in County Kerry. This is on the Dingle Peninsula. So uh, originally this year, 2018, was the first year we were actually going to survey, but we managed to get to it in June 2017 on, on one morning. Uh, so this is the lower model here is, is the 3D model generated in June 2017. And then this is the model in 2018. So this is, you can already see the effects here of, so this is the model here, sorry, without the texture on it. So you can see the kind of, the actual geometry and the actual morphology of, of the actual features. But you can see here from the model, this is what was lost on the site in one year. So this is due to storm brine and storm ophelia having catastrophic collapse of this monument. Uh, this is this is one of the sites which is the kind of top sites in terms of the, the government own this site and they have to manage it. But you can't build a, a wall around this site. There isn't I don't even know if there's any structural engineering or geotechnical engineering solutions or something like this. So. I think for something like this site, it's going to actually eventually fall into the sea. And it's how you manage that decay. And we become like dentists and manage decay of sites, but we can't lose. We, you know, effectively, they're all going to disappear at some point in time. So here's just a, an example of the loss. So this is a, a, a plan done in 1898 by the Royal Arts Academy. Our survey in June 2017, the survey in April 2018. So the green line here represents what was present in 1898, the red line in 2017 so you can see it was a huge catastrophic loss there last year so what we're going to do is take these two data sets together between 2017 and 2018 and actually quantify the volume of loss which occurred and then th this data has been handed over to the geological survey and then they're looking at the geotechnical aspects of why they think that site failed but this data also allows us to kind of understand these sites a bit, a bit better so here in Doonberg we've actually identified a potential uh, landing site and a way up to the to the fort, the promontory fort from the sea. Other sites we've worked on is Balanus Skelligs in County Kerry. So here we have a 12th century uh, abbey and a 16th century uh, uh, castle. I uh, say here Carston as well in within uh, historic environment Scotland and the Adapt Northern Heritage Project. The, they we kind of worked in conjunction with them at this site. So again, we, we, we've. Uh, carried out terrestrial laser scans of all the buildings on the, within the study area. Uh, videography, uh, oblique sim imagery, but then also the kind of ortho imagery and the terrain models developed from this. We've also kind of used a traditional kind of aerial survey. So here we've kind of used the expertise of, of Toby in the, World, in, in the Welsh Commission who came over and, and trained us up into how we actually, you know, hire a plane, fly a plane, insurance, the whole kind of basics around it and then how to shoot uh, from the plane itself. 
So uh, we were lucky to kind of carry out some of these surveys pre Storm Brian and, and, and uh, Storm Ophelia this year or last year. Well, then we kind of went back because now we knew the pilots to ask. We went back and hired the planes again just straight after the storm. So you can see here this is this is an area in South Wexford near Ladies Island, and this is like two days after the storm went through. So you can see the kind of accretion and erosion events that uh, kind of we we're, were able to capture because we were able to get down there on site straight away. And it's also, the project's also allowed us to kind of avail of discover kind of historical aerial survey catalogue. So Gillian Barrett, who's based in the UK but had a tradition of flying in the 80s and 90s and, and noughties in Ireland, she's allowed us access into her archive and we've, we've been scanning it. Here's just a comparison between one of Toby's images in 2017 and hers in, in 1991. So it's good in terms of different kind of baseline strategies to, to, to apply. And then again, through serendipitous kind of uh, conversations with people, we've managed to get access to the military archives now in Ireland as well. So these are in kind of different states of repair in cans, and, and uh, some of them are digitised, some of them aren't, but they've, might, they've started to digitise some of this collection for us to high resolution. So each of the large format images are being scanned to 20, 20 microns, uh, TIFF images. And then where possible, we're getting the plots. And if not, we're trying to work, develop plots based on these images. So this is that same area uh, of, of Ladies Island in, in, in Wexford. And then what we've been doing is taking this imagery and then first of all, rectifying it. So this is a, an area of North Dublin. And then uh, taking this, doing this inside the GIS. So the archeologists can then use this to kind of uh, estimate uh, the, co the coastal edge. In this, in this case, it's the 1940s. But then also use this as an identification process for identifying crop marks, which are potentially potentially being built over, or crop marks that you know due to landscape change and landscape different use of crops. Uh, so the idea is to go back to these sites this year and, and use uh, geophysics on them. And then we were also able to find that basically there's an oblique aerial collection that exists for the whole of the Irish coast. So this is, goes from the uh, Northern Ireland border all the way around the coast. And the amount of overlap in them is immense. You're talking maybe 80% overlap in each photograph. So the idea is this year now is we're taking this image data set and reprocessing it through photogrammetry software. So we've had some tests on this, on similar kind of data sets. One of the problems is you've got black and white data sets, so you're only dealing with one radiometric data set. And then there's things like scratches and, and the grain of the actual images itself. But here's an example of a photographs from 1974 that Leo Swan took of the excavation at Nowth and we've processed these using Agisoft and now we have a 3D model of the excavation in the 1970s so it's the same idea to take these historical photographs and then start to regenerate and reconstruct the landscape as it was back in the 1930s, 1940s, 1970s and start to actually compare these data sets and the accuracy against each other. So our progress to date we've kind of done 25 reconnaissance site surveys uh, within the different areas, uh, we've done th three kind of baseline surveys in area one, two in area two, uh, four baseline sur surveys in area three, uh, three in area four. In, in total, we kind of promised them that we do 10 baseline surveys at the start of the project, but we've managed to get 17 done in total. And then the idea is in two years time, we've got to go back to these sites and record them again and see what changes happen. So we might not do the whole 17, we probably might just do 12, but at least it gives us a, a bit more of a chance to kind of identify areas which, where we think change is happening. And looking forward to, for this year, we're going to start applying the same methods in the marine. So we're looking at using multi, uh, sorry, high resolution uh, laser scanning underwater with, in conjunction with the University of Ulster, using structure for motion imagery underwater, and looking at using UAV drone or underwater UAVs as well. Trying to take this and take it as low cost as possible. You can get these uh, blue robotic underwater systems for about 6,000 euro now. So it's kind of making it available. I think what we want to try and do within the Cherish project is identify methods and their accuracies and their applicability, but look in terms of how these can be applied by local people or by local authorities to carry on the work. But I can compare this also to the multi-beam data. So the multi-beam data, we're going to be taking the, the geological survey boats and actually resurveying the same ships over and over again to see the seasonal change in, in, with it around the ships and the environment. And in terms of multi-spectral survey, we'll be going back to some of these sites and looking at the wider landscape uh, and using multi-spectral uh, drone imagery. 
and then also looking at using the geophysics this next year to identify the kind of hidden archaeology that, that exists in the, in the coastal periphery but it's kind of ignored because it's not visible so therefore it's not a threat but in terms of coastal flooding and saltwater inundation this is probably the biggest threat to, to this archaeological record so thanks very much again this cherished this project is funded by the european regional development fund through the island wales cooperation program and uh, there's our uh, website and uh, twitter and facebook page and there's a couple of uh, newsletters here the newsletters come out every six months and they kind of summarize what we've done in that past six months so if you want to take those copies and if you want them mailed to you or you can get them as pdfs well please sign up to them as well thank you very much okay.